Okay, thank you, Doc. Here's a... My next guest is a lady I'm very fond of, as I'm sure most people are. She has a brand new book out called Betty White Person. Would you welcome, now from Golden Girls, Miss Betty White. Wow. See that tonight? For the first time in many years tonight... We don't have to do a Tarzan sketch. We don't usually when we do sketches, we are undraped. I can keep my clothes keep on. Keep your clothes on. Tonight you come here as an author, so this has to be most dignified. A little dignified. Most dignified. Okay, well I I don't blame you. That's I think right. it's the only way to do it. <laughs> Well, congratulations and happy anniversary and oh, all that thank jazz. You. That's very nice. We're going to hang her out for a while. And I never saw a stand-up comedian sitting down. That was wonderful. Well, I love that. I He's love funny, isn't he? Like that. <laughs> okay, now I, I kind of thumbed through this today. I was looking. Now I've had Shelley Winters on the show, and I was saying, "Wow, I wonder if Betty White really now is going to let it all hang out." I was looking for you know Hollywood exposés and people you have known and. Had. Well, no, I didn't say that. Not no, that's what you were looking for. But I didn't find any of that in this book. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah there was a little about George Burns, but very little. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I just figured, let it read between the lines, and then you'll figure it uh, out. No, it's not that kind of a book. I know what it it's is. It's just a silly little series of vignettes that keeps my skin clear and just worked out. <laughs> Did you want to do this for a long time? I uh, know. Really? They came to me and they said, but I had done a book, you know, right. about three years, four years ago, and they said, would you like to do a book on little your, your feelings on various subjects? Uh, you know, from your point of view or frame of reference. I don't, I guess that means if you're old, you can, you can say it. So I, uh, I said, well, sure, that sounds simple enough. But then you stare at the blank piece of paper, mm -hmm. and you know that it's got to get done, and the deadline keeps doing this. But you've been writing since you, as I understand, since you were 11. Eight. Eight. My first Eight. one was, I was an Oz freak, and I wrote a screenplay called Trouble in Paradise. It starred Mae West, who came across uh, the des Deadly Desert, and... Uh, this is for real, when you write got, I did, and it didn't have, it wasn't a real long uh, screenplay, but it... The premise was she got into Oz and caused all kinds of trouble. I did bring you one in looking around. I keep notes, have kept notes forever. Is this yours? I had, okay. Yeah. I ran across something that I got a bang out of. I, don't, I mean, a kick out of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just reminiscing. Um, <laughs> Memories. Will you look at that? I wrote well, that now, when this I was is, this, is, uh, this is rather age. Society. Or well, cowgirl. I had two such good titles, I couldn't decide between them. Society or Cowgirl, or From Debut to Roundup. It's a By Betty M. White. Yes, Marion. What's the M? Mary? Marion. Marion. Uh-huh, uh -huh. with an O. But it was one of those things that... <laughs> it, it, it has a lot of plot, mm. and I really got carried away, and nobody ever said anything or asked anything. They queried, or they vouchsafed something, or they assured, or they... But the one my, my dad always liked, and I never knew why, he was, well, yes, he ejaculated. And my dad got the biggest kick out of that. I never knew why. <laughs> but it's all in longhand. And, it's all, and I love, it's, it's the, her brother um, was very ill. Her, her, Dan, and I love the part where she said that, uh, that, the, the doctor, Sue decided to face the doctors and find out the truth about Jeff. It seemed to her that he would have been well by this time had it been only a common sickness, as the doctors had called it, not saying what it was. God knows what was the matter with Jeff. Well, Jeff died, and she went out west, and somehow, and somewhere along the line, they had given her a great, I mean, her, somebody had left her a big ranch. So she went out there, and we have a... a Forest fire, we have horse thieves, we have a handsome cowboy, we have a setter dog, of course, named Rusty. But I evidently ran into a little plot problem because I didn't know quite how to handle it. Uh -huh. So I had a wonderful idea. She woke up, it was all a dream. Jeff was well. well. And do you know that they stole that idea? On Dallas, I think. Yes. Me. Yeah. But it's uh, that's the way you start, and then you go from there, and it's taken me that many years to really get around to writing another one. <laughs> you, yeah, I find, I've known you a number of years, but I don't sure I really know you. I mean, well, sometimes you play this, hi, how are you? 
you know, and then underneath. These, uh, these if little... you hadn't gotten in such a rush to get married, we could have arranged something. Well, I mean, you're, you're so... Oh, now he's a good guy. You're, you're somewhere between Mother Teresa and a call girl. Somewhere. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure where it is. Uh, anyway, uh, now about the book. You talk about the fact that people watching, the fact that people who are friends of yours now, when you were a child, you looked at it. Now they're your friends. Well, I can't Celebrities, believe. you know, and all of a sudden now they're, they're close friends. The Jimmy Stewart. You know, yeah. I, I, Gloria, his wife, and I serve on the board of the Los Angeles Zoo. Yeah. And Jimmy will come in, well, well hello, Betty. And, and, and I can't, it, I'll never learn to take it for granted. I even get shook when you say, hello, Betty, how oh, are please. you? And my Betty. No, please, I do. Please, we no. grew up together, kind of. You, you know, out here. We Early days of television. In, in television together. But I still get shook. Do you get a lot of static? I mean, do you ever have that feeling about anybody? Of course, not now after umpteen years. But, I mean, is there anybody who comes on that really throws you a little bit or that you get Strangely enough, the one time I got bothered on this show was with the one night Audrey Hepburn was on. And really? I don't know why. I became absolutely, you know, she is very, not, not aloof, proper maybe is the word. And I just didn't know how to, how to handle it. Oh, isn't that funny? And I don't know why, but the, she just un completely unnerved me. And I was, I, was, I was babbling like this, you know. I, I completely fell apart. And once you start that, once you realize you're doing it, you can't turn it off. No. And then you really make a horse's uh, rosette out of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you find people th think of you in a little, you know, the little television set where you can't hear, and they talk right in front of you? And, oh, she, there she is. Oh, it couldn't be. Yes, it is. That's, that's her. Oh, yeah. She's not as fat as I thought she was. Yeah, she's not, she's not quite as... And, they're ta and you don't know where to look. You, know, you, you, you mentioned shows in the book. I didn't even know you were even on. Blondie. Oh, well, that was radio. R that was radio. Yeah, that was radio. I got that by accident. Um, I had been you doing... Didn't, you played Blondie? No, 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 no. I, I, I tried to... I played it and lost. No, I went... I showed up one day with... I would only do one-liners in radio. You know, right. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Those were the parts I played. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes crowd noises, um, but then the um, the FBI called, and I came in to do a kind of a little speaking part. Well, it turned out when I walked in, they said, well, you're not blonde. I hadn't been suddenly struck blonde at that point. <laughs> well, what is your natural color? God knows, and I'm not about to find out. Since you brought it up, I it thought was It was mousy brown. I don't know what's been going on yeah. under there. But I'm not one to, to talk about it, well. Johnny. Um, but this is nature at work. I mean, you... Uh -huh. So is this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. yes. Uh, but... It, you have more chemicals in there than Lake Erie has. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Let's get it out. But, but anyway, outside of that. And it's called hair pressure. Anyway, they, they were expecting this other actress. And that, but it was too late to recast, so I, I stole this other actress's part, and I right. got a whole speaking part. She w turned out to be Betty White, who uh, was talent coordinator with Jack Bailey for so many years. And to this day, we still get our mail this way. And no matter when she sends me the mail, she says, you owe me a part. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you forget it. Now, do you go out on the book tour uh, to, to promote the book? Well, we're filming. We do three weeks of Golden Girls and right. then a week off and three weeks. Uh, so I, I, uh, on the last hiatus week, I went to New York. And they have a wonderful invention now called satellite stuff. Where so you can do a hookup to all of the... From, so I am a hooker. Come to <laughs> <laughs> no, you know I meant nothing. I know you that. meant that. Um, but from nine to one, you do twenty-two cities, just sitting there, and that instead of running around all those cities, yeah. it's wonderful. I must say that the Golden Girls, all you know, certainly don't need the plug, but that is one of the most creative, funny shows on television I've ever seen. Oh, it is really oh, done. You don't need me to tell you. That, oh, not only, really, not only the girls, so much fun to watch. But the writers yeah. and the producers and the tender, loving care they take. First-rate stuff. Oh, it's such. A, we keep looking at each other each Monday when we see the script, looking at each other like this. They've done it again. Don't no, say anything. They've done it again. That's a first-rate show. We have to do this. We'll do this. We're coming back. There we go.